Hello, I'm Andrew Main, Wealth Editor at The Australian. I'm talking today to Lee White, who's the Chief Executive of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. I thought we'd uh, have a bit of a canter around a couple of quite major economic issues, Lee. Uh, here we are in Australia, um, bewailing the state of our economy when everyone else is looking to Australia to lead the world. Uh, who's right and who's wrong? Um, perhaps, Andrew, there isn't a right or a wrong, but perhaps when you're in a, uh, a different jurisdiction, how you see the grass as greener is always an interesting part of human frailty, I suppose. But really, in reality, when we look at the economic fundamentals of Australia, we're in pretty good shape. Let's just capture a couple of those for a minute. Unemployment around 5%, inflation around about 2%. Sure, we've got a fairly strong Aussie dollar and we need to explore the implications of that. But at the moment, the Australian economy, its fundamentals are quite strong. Yeah, do you think uh, that that phrase, Dutch disease, is, is perhaps relevant to Australia? Remember that in the Netherlands they had all that gas and sure. they discovered that the, they, were, they were so resource rich, pushing the gilder up so high that they became uh, uneconomic in terms of manufacturing, etc. Isn't that the risk that we're wrestling with? Uh, there is to a degree around the heights of the Australian dollar right at the moment and I suppose it's a question then about some of the industries that have driven Australia's performance in the past that have perhaps been hampered at the moment with the Australian dollar, yeah. how they start to respond in light of its sustained performance. So in particular I'd be looking to the tourism industry, I'd be looking at to perhaps the property and construction industries as well. Yeah. So for example with tourism, it certainly took a dip, and that's because a lot of the people who used to visit us don't as much yeah, now. Particularly US, I think. Particularly US, but my reach then is to have a look at the statistics of the Chinese tourists, because they've grown quite substantially in recent years, yeah. and how that industry then starts to respond and deal with the high dollar. Yeah, working on the assumption then, Lee, that the, the dollar's not suddenly going to drop out of bed in the way it used to do. No, I, I think we can say certainly that the heights we're seeing at the moment have now been embedded for a period of time that business needs to work on the presumption that it will be within a particular range around parity with US. Yeah, meaning, meaning that's how you've got to do your planning. Yeah. Mm. Um, now, we've had the share market Leap, leap up nicely, uh, certainly uh, there's a much higher morale around the big end of town um, I, since about July of 2012. Yes. Um, I guess it would be a bit cruel of me to ask you to, to pick where, where the markets go, but we're just above, uh, at the time of making, uh, making this, having this conversation, uh, it's just above 5,000. Um, uh, would you be reasonably positive on the upside? Uh, yes, I would, but as, as a good chartered accountant, always with a degree of some conservatism. Yeah. So let's just unpack that for a minute, Andrew, and think about what we've seen. So since July of 2012, quite a strong increase within the market, about uh, a thousand points or something to that degree. Mm. So the momentum has been there, but what we should really be asking ourselves is what has driven that momentum. Yeah. At the moment, we're going through another reporting season. The results coming from the Australian uh, corporates look strong, yeah. look good, but we need to ask why are they looking so strong? For me, I think it's a combination partially that the cost cutting that a number of corporates undertaken, have undertaken is actually starting to hit, yeah. and that's good, but not as much around the sustaining or new business aspects. And therefore, my reach to you and our viewers on this would be around the sense that there will be an increase to the market in during 2013, but it would not be to the same degree of that second half of 2012. Yeah, uh, and uh, you mentioned cut, cutting back by a lot of corporates. They've mm. done they've done pretty well. That's going to have a, 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 a that's going to cause a bit of a lift in unemployment, isn't it? Uh, potentially, or it's how they, certainly for some businesses, how they've done it in terms of headcount. For others, it might be just the greater use of technology or some other areas of productivity yeah. increase. But again, with unemployment around 5, 5.1% at the moment, we've got some room to make some adjustments there without it having a substantial impact. Yeah, uh, you, you're probably not, not ready for this one, but uh, uh, Reserve Bank interest rates, uh, we're, we're at 3% at the moment. Can you mm. anticipate they, they, any circumstance by which they'd be forced to cut rates further? 
Oh yes, uh, and I think uh, during the course of 13, the bank will certainly be looking further to a cut than any other initiative. I think in the first quarter and potentially into the second, it will be steady as she goes. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because of the fundamentals we've just spoken about. But potentially there will need to be a little bit more of an adjustment through the monetary policy of the interest rate setting in order to make sure we continue to get the level of growth and stimulation that we're looking for. But it will not be anywhere near the four cuts that we've yeah, already had in recent right. times to produce what we need. Because I guess the RBA has only got a certain amount of ammunition to throw at the risk of our economy slowing. And if they throw too much too soon, it becomes counterproductive. That's right. It? And what, is, what are we ideally looking for? We're looking for a combination of that economic stability yeah. together with some level of growth. Now, what you start looking at then is, Andrew, a combination of the monetary policy which is what we've just spoken about with the interest rates, mm -hmm. and then overlaying what we're seeing in some fiscal policy changes in order to get that stimulation for growth. And the two should go hand in hand. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're currently going through a situation, we probably don't want to uh, bag the federal government too much. They're doing a pretty sound job of bagging each other at the <laughs> moment. But uh, I, I take it that um, it was never a big worry to you that we weren't going to see a $1 billion budget surplus this year. Um, look, to be frank, I think there was a lot of focus on a very short-term measure when in reality me uh, managing something as strong as the Australian economy really needs a more medium-term um, reflections. So the here and now, um, we're not as focused on that. Yeah. What we're focused on is taking the right monetary and fiscal policy settings yeah. in order to deliver a surplus, but we need that surplus more in a medium-term setting. And so, uh, yes, uh, given that we've got an election coming up in September, or uh, there's some speculation it could be brought forward, uh, that's got to be a destabilising influence, isn't it? Very much. And uh, business for some time now has been crying out, and we've been supporting this view, that there has been too much change or potential change in a number of the policy settings that it has inhibited the growth of Australia. And what we're really saying is, at times, governments need to be very careful that they're not responding too quickly, that it undermines a level of confidence in the business community. I mean, just looking at what happened with superannuation in the last few weeks, would it be fair to say that there was a, a few rumours flying around about superannuation being hit for tax at some point that caused a great deal of anxiety. It sure it? did. It, yeah. it created a stir. And, and we need to unpack this a little bit and ask ourselves, superannuation was put in place primarily for the purpose of ensuring that as Australians got older, they could look after their financial needs. Yeah. Now, that meant that there were certain tax concessions put in place. For a good that, reason, yeah. For a good reason. That logic is sound and is sound today yeah. in 2013. What we do have, that Andrew, is a large sum of money in excess of a trillion dollars yeah. sitting in superannuation. And therefore, where large sum of money go, at times governments potentially think about further types of taxation. Our yeah. reach to it is do not compromise the, long, the medium and long-term goals of trying to make sure Australians can look after their financial security with yeah. short-term tax measures. Meaning leave that pot alone? Uh, leave that pot possible. alone. And again, Andrew, for the right reasons of trying to create a level of confidence around the superannuation industry because there is too much change occurring in it yeah. and there needs to be some period of stability when you can see what the industry is actually demonstrating its value. Yeah, particularly at such a positive time. Uh, Quite so. Uh, yeah, Quite so. Is so impressive. Lee, thank you very much. Thank you.